Welcome back everybody. Today, I have something that I've put a lot of time into and to figuring out, and that's how to essentially put a triple disc clutch onto relatively any engine. Now, there's a few things that have to be considered depending on what type of engine you have, but this is an engine that never came with a manual transmission, yet there's a triple disc clutch attached to it, and it actually works. It releases with a manual transmission throwout bearing. So I'm going to show you how I actually went about doing it. What I, the biggest thing is that you have to retain some sort of starter interface. Now this is an automatic flex plate. So obviously you have your mounting points for the torque converter itself. We aren't using any of that. We're only using it as an interface for the starter itself. So as long as you can retain some sort of starting interface, that's about the biggest concern that you have. Besides that, everything else should be able to be figured out and worked out. So as you see, this is triple disc. You can see one, two, three discs itself and three different friction plates here. And now the biggest thing is I'm gonna put you on the tripod and come back and I'll show you I'll pop this whole assembly apart and I'll show you the critical piece that makes it all work. Okay, so this is the secret to making this all work, is getting these to be drilled to match the existing crank pattern. Now this is a redrilled flywheel. This was a new old stock NASCAR flywheel. And it had eight holes drilled in it from there. And I went through, figured out my bolt circle and what diameter I needed. And it worked out that they wouldn't intersect if I just offsetted them. So I offset them, had a machinist bore the center out because you also have to make this fit around the end of the crankshaft. Drill these holes and as you can see it lines up perfectly with the existing holes in the crank. Now there's only four bolts in here there should be eight but I'm taking this on an awful lot so I haven't been able no reason to actually final assembly everything. So you also need to find a pilot bearing. Now this came out of a Colorado because the Colorado itself came with a manual transmission and the rear the rear of the crankshaft is the size the same. So you need to be able to find the inner diameter of your crankshaft. So I will take this off and also my flex plate off and show you what I'm talking about. So the important diameters that I was talking about. This interior lip right here is what your pilot bearing OD needs to mesh with. You want about a 0.1 millimeter interference, which is just like maybe five thousandths if you're working in standard stuff, because you want it to go in there easy, you want it to go in straight, but you don't want to have to pound it in so hard that you can never get it back out, because these eventually go bad, They're just like any bearing, so you need to get them back out. Now this exterior diameter, now that is the diameter that you'd need to bore your flywheel to because it sits right around here to keep everything concentric. Everything needs to be concentric with itself, that way everything spins and is balanced. If your drivetrain isn't balanced, you're gonna get nasty vibrations and things could break. So that diameter is very important. That inner diameter is very important. And a bolt circle, every machinist knows what a bolt circle is, but if you don't, essentially the diameter of the center of these. So there's eight of them on a bolt circle that is roughly so as you can see I'm going to the center of the holes now this is a very rough measurement just for argument's sake but it's about 84 and a half millimeters now the better way to do it would be to take the inside diameter write that down take the outside of them write that down and average them that would effectively give you the center to center distance of these. So if you gave a flywheel to a machinist with 
say eight holes spaced evenly on a specific bolt circle, be able to do it right quick and it wouldn't even cost that much. Then you also need to give him the bolt size. Now mine is an M10 by one. So the hole size is a little over 10, so say 10 and a half millimeters. That makes sure that the bolts go through, they don't hang up on anything. And then it allows it to clamp down tight to the surface. So with that, you can effectively machine one of these flywheels. Now these, I got this one off eBay, really cheap because it's new old stock. There's nothing wrong with it, it's brand new, it's just never been used. That way you can take it, as you can see it fits right over that. Drill it to your bolt pattern, and there you go. Now you have a flywheel interface that can adapt to a 7.25 triple disc clutch that is pretty standard and pretty easy to find and it has an incredible torque holding capacity. Well, hopefully with that, you figured out or learned something new. Maybe it's how to find the bolt circle, what to bore this to, what bearing diameters you need. Hopefully you just learned something, anything. It doesn't matter to me, but if you did, if you have questions, comment them, I'll answer them. I'm not here to keep secrets. So if you like it, like it, comment, subscribe for more. I plan to do a dry sub system that should be fairly universal. So with that, keep doing new things and have a great day.